Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are back, back, baby. Well, sort of. From the title, I'm sure you can tell that this is going to be a compilation video, but not just any compilation video. This one is covering my best and favorite Stardew Valley challenges that I've completed so far on the channel. So buckle up as we take you through the most coolest, fun, and exhilarating challenges we've done so far. We're going to start out with some fishing. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, and this challenge, I didn't do a merry speed run. I didn't fight the Prairie King, and of course, I didn't complete the Golden Clock Challenge either. I did something so challenging that few have dared to do so. I tried to catch every single fish in Stardew Valley. This includes every seaweed, every algae, and all crab pot items. This challenge had a lot of ups and downs. It felt like smooth sailing at times, and others, the tide felt like it was against me. However, before we dive into it, I'd like to credit the following Stardew Valley creators who inspired me to do this challenge. Therm, Shawnee Dew, Charlie Barley. Now enough waiting around, let's get into it. So uh, day one was pretty normal. Try to remember how the heck one plays this game. First of all, I always forget how loud the sound is. And uh, did some uh, very basic things. Adjusted the settings, took a look at the house, went outside and pretty much played like normal. After I cleared some rocks, I uh, thought a little bit more about what to do with my life and was like, well, let's, let's plant some parsnips. So I did the typical 14 in a row, because as an OCD man myself, I uh, had to have it all perfectly aligned. Day one, pretty simple, and here we go into day two. So, day two, rolled around like any other day. I woke up, and I got the letter from Willy, and Willy gives you the fishing rod if you're new to Stardew Valley. So, went and got the rod, it was pretty great. First catch was an anchovy. Very simple, basic, usually one to get. Second catch, the sardine. Smallmouth bass was caught. Catch number four was the sunfish. I felt pretty good. I did the math and I did to catch at least one fish a day and when I got more comfortable it'd be one fish every two days. Fifth catch was the carp. The sixth catch took a little longer than I expected was the chub. Seventh catch finally was the bullhead. And last but not least, even though it technically does not fall in the fish category, it does for Stardew Valley. Eighth catch was the green algae. Day three was a really exciting day, but I don't really want to spoil it for you, so I'll just let the footage explain for itself. Day three, the ninth catch was the Shad, in relation to the Chad, big brother to big sad. Tenth catch was a herring, which is not a red herring, like all you spy lovers out there. I also huh? did catch a diamond at the same time, which was great, because I needed to remember that, well, in the giant scheme of things, I needed to donate at least 60 items to the museum so I could get the sewer key, so I could get the mutant carp, so I could get that all completed, but that's another tangent for another day. Eleventh catch, it was an incredibly long and difficult time, and the difficulty level of this particular fish was a 70, but I did manage to catch the eel. Oh yeah, baby! There's only a slight problem afterwards. Didn't have enough energy. And it was getting kind of late. So, I had to figure out some things. Also, P.S. it was raining. Raining, spring. Yeah, there's, there's one big fish that we always like to do, and it's best known on Tinder. It's the catfish. So, the catfish was a big struggle, took a super long time, but I finally caught it at the very last moment, and it's exactly what I needed for time. Holy sh- oh, Holy f shit! <laughs> what are the odds? And lastly, to bring day three to a close, I caught the green algae. Day four started out like any other day. Woke up, got a letter from Willie. It's about the deluxe fishing pole. So one of the biggest things I haven't really talked about yet in this video is luck. And I'm, no, I'm not talking about a rabbit's foot either but that's later. So luck in Stardew Valley kind of ranges from very poor, poor, average, great, and well, excellent. Now technically it could be called something different. I apologize if I'm wrong. Please don't destroy me in the comments. The better luck day you have, the better quality of fish you can get. And that really means there's one fish in particular I need to catch on an excellent luck day, and that's the legend. So it's really important to catch this fish on a rainy day. We need great luck and it needs to rain. The problem with this point in the game is, I've got a lot of things, I need to start setting things aside. I need some wood. So I make a little storage chest, it'll be good, I'll go down, I'll get the fiberglass rod. That's pretty much it. So, get the fiberglass rod, catch 14 is the halibut. Or some people say the halibut. Or the halibut deer, 
which is not a type of fish, it's a type of weapon, by the way. Which is in Valheim! <laughs> Side note, if you haven't caught those videos, those are great. And then the flounder, which is a big common fish in the magic school bus for all you younglings out huh? there. It's before your time. That's catch number 15 and concedes to bring day four to an end. See you guys on day five. Day five rolls around, the most important quest, if I wanted to take in the dog or not. Anyway, I do get the dog as per usual, Pine the dog. So the goal is to get level 10 fishing. And the goal also for level 10 fishing is so I don't have to fish so much, ironic given the video title and everything. But I also need level 10 fishing to catch those legends. Also, I do a little bit of research here on the outside world, and uh, you probably hear my Siri going off, and uh, the editors were so polite, they decided to keep all the footage so you guys could experience what it's like to be me when I panic! Hey Siri, how long is the traveling cart open in Stardew Valley? How should I know? I'm not your slave, you dumbass. Anyway, we go on to catch 16, and we catch the largemouth bass. I think about getting the backpack out because I want to go back to school. Stay in school, kids. So I sell some fish. I actually end up not getting level five fishing. But hey, maybe day six will bring us better luck. All right, so day six started off pretty simple. I looked at my bank account, realized I was too broke, and then I played some more Stardew. Also realized I was too broke to buy an actual bag upgrade. So instead, I spent the money on seeds and I fished, fished, and did more fishing. Day six was actually the first day where I caught no new fish. But I needed the experience, needed the money, planted some seeds that I bought earlier, and I ended the day. Day seven, I woke up, tended the crops, went straight to fishing as per usual. The main thing I'm trying to do at this point is just grind out all the level experiencing I can to hit level 10, and the perfect catch, which the goal was to do as many as I could, also gives more experience. So, I realized I was a bit low on money, so sold all the fish I could, ended up catching 26 fish, but none of them happened to be new ones. Day eight rolled around. I thought about, and thought about it, and thought about it. Looked at my big account statement, and I thought about maybe getting the Iridium Rod. Problem with the Iridium Rod is that it costs 7,500 gold, which is, well, a little bit less than I currently had. Actually, that's a lie. It's a lot more than I currently had. Ended up catching 30 fish. None of them were new, and I also hit level six fishing. Day nine rolled around. It was pretty great. Finally got a letter from my mom. Which, editors, by the way, if you could make sure she actually responds to my calls, that would be great. Fished a lot more, caught 37 fish, none of them were new, as per usual, and finally hit level 7 fishing. Whoa! Level 7 fishing, let's go! Oh my god! Damn! I did not expect that. Day 10. I had a goal today for when I woke up. I knew it was kind of gonna be a rough luck day, I checked that out beforehand. I was at least wanting to catch 20 fish. And as I was walking to my favorite fishing spot, I thought I should probably set up the crab pot eventually to get the crabs, the snails, all the good stuff. I ended up getting the Iridium Rod, 7,500 gold later, ended up catching 14 more and beating the goal with 34 fish total, no new ones. Day 11, rolled around, I did the one thing you would least expect me to do that day. I fished. Also, during this time, you'll probably realize in the audio recording, my voice gets kind of a little more quiet. I gotta be honest with you, probably because I didn't drink enough coffee, or it was the brownie I just ate, or all the chicken as well, but I got hit by this huge wave of tiredness. Dude, I just got hit by this wave of tiredness, like, you know, like, oh, but, oh good. I'm pretty sure after I caught 37 fish that day and hit level 8 fishing, I'm pretty sure I took a nap before the next day. Day 12 rolls around, got a letter from mom. Editors, please make sure she's still free for the weekend. Caught 47 fish and continued on with my way to the next day. So, day 13 rolled around. I checked the weather for tomorrow. It's a sunny day. So, Today marks the Egg Festival, everyone's favorite event. Usually what you're supposed to do is go around, talk to everyone, get some friendship points going, but forget that. Actually, that's exactly what I did. So I did the Egg Festival, I crushed some kids in getting eggs, and I got myself a cool straw hat. Ladies, gentlemen, I will see you on day 14. Day 14 rolled around. Pretty normal weather day. Went to a classic fishing spot. This fish here gave me a pretty difficult time, but finally caught it, and lo and behold, level 9 fishing. We're so close. Day 15. Got a letter from Granny. 
Um, talking about one of the key things here I always like to bring up is time in the upper right hand corner doesn't actually move when you're reeling in the fish. So an average day in Stardew Valley, if you don't do anything, like open up your menu or cause the time to stop, unless you're playing a multiplayer, which it continues then, is time is typically it's about a 14 minute day from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. So it actually can be a little longer, things to keep in mind. I ended up catching 42 fish that day and ended up getting a thousand gold from the halibut. 5,000 gold total. And those perks are coming in clutch. Day 16 is huge. It's raining today, which means it's time to catch the legend. Biggest thing to keep in mind when you catch the legend is you have to be level 10 fishing, it has to be spring, and it has to be raining. Unfortunately, I'm not level 10. So, I need to use the trout soup. Increases your level by one, and get also a trap bobber. We'll see if it works. Also, they want to feature my farm in the magazine. Hate to break it to you, it's not that great. So, the legend, I try and I try and I try. I keep going back, I realize I don't have enough bobbers. I keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Only get one to two attempts, and unfortunately, I faint and I'm unsuccessful. Day 17, I wake up and check the forecast and find out it's supposed to rain the next day. So perfect time to try again to catch the legend. So, good night time. It's getting kinda spooky, as I do say in the game. Good night time, spooky. <laughs> grind and I grind and I grind, and I hit finally level 10 fishing. Yay! Day 18 starts out, luck is not looking too good. The legend rolls around, I messed up catching it the first time. Finally, the 17th catch, I caught the legend. Holy f we caught it! <laughs> Holy shit, we caught the first legend! <laughs> on day 18 of spring one, which means we are right on track. After this, with my victory dance still flowing through my veins, went home, did some farming, planted the strawberry seeds that I picked up from the egg festival, did some work around the house, made a scarecrow, finally, and I went to the mines. Made it to floor five, and I couldn't find a way out after a while. Big start though. Day 19, what are the crops? I told myself, I wanna keep working on the mines. The goal is five floors a day. Since I can't do the explosive ammo anymore, let's just try to do five a day. Found a lake in the cave, Fished for a while, and the 18th overall catch was the stone fish. And it made it to floor 20. Way ahead of schedule. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Do I 20 roll around? <clears throat> More mines. I'm gonna be honest with you, audience, it's gonna be a lot of mining over the next couple days. So, made it to level 35 in the mines by the end of the day. Way, way further than I wanted to, and I am excited to see where we continue to go. But spring's coming to an end which means when summer hits, back to fishing. Day 21 came along. I did my usual morning routine, checked the mail, watered the plants, ignoring the dog per usual. A lot more mining to do. We made it down all the way to level 40. Just a little bit further to 44, but we're gonna call it there for the day. The next day, day 22, went out shopping for something that could give me high amounts of energy while I was out in the mines and decided to focus on sugar. Now kids, dentists will love that. Bought some sugar and headed to the mines more. Made it to level 49, wanted to go to 50, but unfortunately I was out of energy and had nothing to eat and just made it home in time. Day 23 rolled around, didn't do much, except I spent all of my income on sugar. It's an investment. Went to the mines, almost died the slimes on level 53, but barely made it out just in time. Day 24, I skipped the flower dance. Oh, I'm not going to the flower dance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm not going to go to the flower dance. Went to the mines as always, was making great progress, but then I unfortunately passed out. Wouldn't have happened if I went to the flower dance, huh? See you guys tomorrow. Day 25, went to the mines, made it to level 60. Got a crystal dagger, might come in handy. Okay, guys, it's time to record some Stardew Valley because I just played League and I f***ed up! <laughs> 2026, collected the strawberries, which finished finally in the growing cycle. And for some reason, I kind of panicked here before I went to the mines and I forgot what in the world I named my dog. Pike? Pine? What the heck did I name the dog? 
I can't remember <laughs> what I named the dog, chat. Pike! Pine, Pine, I named him Pine. <laughs> so, I'm back to the mines and we'll keep going. Finally, I caught the ice pip on floor 60. And we're already way ahead of schedule. Went home after that. So, day seven, held around. I worked around the farm a bit, made a second chest finally. At some point, I think I actually had a stroke from Stardew Valley. <laughs> 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. <laughs> Oh no, but I need to buy shit from. Ah! Which is a concern considering I work in healthcare, but we pushed for it. Bought some salad to fuel myself because that's what everyone wants when they go on a journey. I sold the crystal dagger, bought the Templar blade, and I made it to level 75 in the mines. Only 25 more to go to get the eel. Called it there and head back home. Last day of spring rolled around, day 28 out of 100 of the challenge, and mining, 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 mining. Trying to do as much as I can before fishing begins the next day in summer. Made it to level 85. That's not it. We decided to go a little bit further, and we make it all the way to 90. Day 29, the first day of summer. Making preparations for summer, made some furnaces, started smelting stuff to make more sprinklers. Back to fishing. 20th catch was the rainbow trout. 21 was the pike. Not related to pine, who is the dog, by the way. Oh, good first day of summer. See you guys tomorrow. Day 30, pulled around. Went to the docks to fish instead. Catch number 22 is the tilapia. 23 is the tuna. 24 is the pufferfish. I had to stop playing that game for a while because I was getting hungry and I made some chicken. I'm cooking in here I'm cooking some chicken. Woo! Yeah, I'm back, planted some blueberries, and uh, don't worry, there will be a chicken making video in the next days. See you guys tomorrow. Day 31, worked more around the house. By the house, I mean the farm. By the farm, I mean the ground. Cleared some trees because my farm is dismissible. I was trying to buy a salad and harass and bug to be by the damn salad. Went fishing. Messed up and decided to just quit and go home for the day. Not a great day. So, day 32 rolled around, checked the weather, no rain. Went back to the docks after being defeated yesterday. 25th catch finally was the octoguzi. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that octopus, I was holding my breath the entire fucking time. 26th catch was the red mullet. And after a bit of struggling, 27th and 28th catch was the crimson fish. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 we got it, woo! You got one with the wood In the bream. See you guys tomorrow. Day 33, same routine, went fishing. 29th, caught the sturgeon. No, not the surgeon. Big difference. One's got flippers, uh -huh. the other one's got scoffles. 30th catch was the super cucumber. Max rarity two. Good sell, goodbye. Day 34. Fished, 31st catch, caught the Derid Derido Derud Sandstorm. Went back to the mines, found an obsidian edge in Le Floor 90 of uh, uh, the chest. Did some more mines, made it to level 95. Hold it today and went home. Day 35 was a normal day, went to my usual spot. 32nd catch was a red snapper. Went back to the spot and started placing crab pots. A new fish caught and we were beginning to run out of energy. So, went home and did the one thing people love. Slept. Day 36, went to the mines, only had five levels to go. And afterwards, he hit level 100. Ah! You found a star drop, your mind is full of thoughts of doggo. Your maximum energy level has increased. Got the star drop, took a little peek at 101. I went to go check on crab pots, added bait, and well, went home. Welcome to day 37. Back to the mines, not done yet. Kept pushing though for 105 and eventually got it. Did the usual checks, and uh, it was gonna be a great night. But then the goddamn tooth fairy showed up and messed up my planting. Not a big fan of the fairy, it kind of messes up your rotation in the cycle, but it's all good. Day 38, also known as summer day 10. I woke up and I saw a letter from the mayor about some gathering at the beach. I don't want to be a uh, Debbie Downer, but I'm having a whale of a time. <laughs> now I want to the beach. 33rd catch was the crab! <clears throat> Afterwards I went back to the mines, I reached level 110, and uh, couldn't find a way out, but I finally made it. Went home, call it a day. Day 39, I uh, <clears throat> woke up the entire neighborhood and my editor to some great scene. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Check the crab pots. 
headed back to my second home, the Mullins. Forgot about the lava eel, like completely blanked, as you can tell from what I stay here. Oh, I haven't caught the lava eel, have I? Oh no, that's something big I need to try to catch. Finally, I hit level 120 in the mines, and I ended the day there by collecting the Skull Cavern Key. Perfect! We have completed the mines! Day 40 rolled around, did some normal stuff in the morning, went to the mines for the real reason a lava eel. Took a while, but I finally got it. Catch 34 was the lava eel, because that's hot. <sighs> but I got it, let's go! Woo! Got the eel. Bada bing, bada boom! Hell yeah, chat. Got the eel. Let's go grab some more copper. One pick up the upper floors for some copper. Found a lot. Goal was 100 copper, at least got 135. After that went home and day 40 came to an end. Day 41 was a pretty standard, kind of boring day. Did some clearing around the house, checked the crab pots, and then went to the mine and searched for iron. Eventually got to work towards fixing the boat. Did no fishing, even though that's the whole point of this challenge, but Maybe better luck tomorrow. Day 42. Pretty much not a lot changed as I was hoping it would, unfortunately. Just spent a lot of time in the mines. Wanted to get more iron. Got 168 by the end of the day. Hopefully that's enough. Day 43 rolled around and I needed just one more catch to get all the items from the crab pot. All the main things I need from the crab pot that I've already caught apart from the shrimp is the clam, the cockle, the crab, the lobster, the mussel, the oyster, crayfish, the snail, and the periwinkle. So, shrimp can only be caught in the ocean. So I simply just moved all my pots down to the docks, hope for the best, and uh, yeah. Finally also got enough iron to make sprinklers. See you tomorrow. Day 44, more fish for more gold. I need a lot of income to eventually finish the Jojo Mart Center and uh, actually scrap that plan. I went on an adventure, collected some useful stuff, could sell for more gold, but I didn't do any fishing today. Day 45. Went and opened some geodes that I had found, and I needed to donate 60 total of either minerals, artifacts, or combined. Because I need to donate them to get certain rewards, and I really need the sewer key. So, I'll just keep rummaging around looking for stuff I can sell and use. Day 46. Did the usual work around the house, did the crops that needed to be tended, and finally went to go check on community development projects. Now I need to complete a few of them, specifically the bus stop, and that's actually the main one in order to get some specific fish. So total, though, I need to complete the entire community development projects in order to get access to the boat. That's going to be 140,000 gold if you include the initial membership, and I only had 20 pounds. So, went around, did some artifact placing and looking for further of them, and uh, went home and uh, decided to jazz it up, add some decorations to it, make it look a little more homey. See so you guys tomorrow. Day 47. I just collected some smelted ore, put some new ones in, watered the crops, went to bed. Speed run! Day 48. Literally did the same thing. See you guys tomorrow! Day 49. After what seemed like forever, I decided to do back what I came here to originally do. I came, I saw, I conquered, I fished. Went and bought some profitable seeds went with a hundred radishes and uh, planted them, watered them, and tried to get them as ready as I could before summer ended. Day 50, we're officially halfway there at this point. So let me give you a quick progress update. So far, here's all the wonderful fish and crab pot items we have caught. So Ginger Island is gonna be kind of our biggest hurdle at this point. In order to do that, we have to get that 140,000 gold and then find the resources to finish the boat. But anyway, let's focus on the present. Made a scarecrow for the new farm, went to Secret Woods. Some of you are probably asking how, and that is a tactic I am not going to show you. I don't wanna spoil that for new players. We catch the wood skip as the 35th catch. And at this point, we are bringing day 50 to an official close. Thank you, if you're still sticking around at this point, I appreciate it. And that is time for today's sponsor, you! Aww. We'll see you guys on day 51. Day 51, woke up, and, uh, watered the new mega farm. Went to go see if the shrimp had been caught, but no luck yet. And that's pretty much it. No fishing today. Day 52, instead of watering the farm like I planned to, I literally just stood there and I ate my chocolate bar. All right, I'm back. <sighs> Eat my chocolate bar. 
I was famished at this point. Also, I hit a new world record for speedrunning for eating, so which was great too. After that, I went to the mines, gathered some more resources for sprinklers, and went home. See you tomorrow. Day 53, did the same old blah, 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 boring crop pottery. I'm really excited for these sprinklers. So, went to go back to check on the crab pots, and finally got the shrimp. Got the whole crab pot bundle. More mines afterwards, and that's pretty much it. Day 54, getting closer to the amount of gold we need. Right now we're just at about 35,000. And other than that, didn't do much and just prepared more for what we're needing later on. Day 55, radish time. They're done growing and now it's time to make some mink. I went and collected some sweet peas, went back fishing again. First time in ages, got a dinosaur egg, which is extremely rare. So most of the time, try not to donate that. Try to incubate it, make your own dinosaurs. It's pretty neat. Like I said, tomorrow, all I'm gonna do is fish all day, right over here. Decided to fish tomorrow because it's the best way to get money for now. Day 56, also known as summer day 28. It's the last day of summer. Turns out I lied. I'm not fishing. I decided to spend the day making and placing sprinklers. I had enough to cover the entire farm, took the whole day, but it was definitely worth it. I will see you guys next fall. Have a great trip. <laughs>
went over there, tried to do some work, only made it to floor eight. But it went really, really bad. I died. No! And I lost 5,000 gold. I just went home after that. Day 67, I spent the day gathering as much hardwood as I could. So, little fun fact about this. Spoiler warning, big explosion, spoiler ahead. All right, now that we got that out of the way. Hardwood is needed to fix the boat. So, that's why I was trying to click as much as I could. And that's that. Didn't do much other than that, so on to the next day. Day 68, I was prepared. I was mentally ready. I was prepared to kick some butt. I went back to the skull cavern. I made it to floor 10, no problems. Went a little bit further to floor 12, but that was enough for one day. Did some more fishing. The 42nd catch was the scorpion carp, which means we've officially caught the last desert fish we need. Hey, it's my favorite day of fall, day 13. It's also day 69 in the 100 day challenge. And the cranberries are done, which is really why it's my favorite. Get your head out of the gutter. So, cranberries are done. Made a little bit less, around 47,000 gold, but no major complaints. Went and paid for the greenhouse to be fixed. Went down to place some more artifacts, getting super close to the reward we need, 60 is total. Did some more fishing to make some more gold. Uh, no new fish, but a little more income. Day 70, went up and set up sprinklers in the greenhouse. I went back to Jojo. Couldn't choose between the Minecrafts and the panning, so I went with the panning for 20,000 gold. Possible higher chance of finding artifacts and minerals, so that's why I went with that. Then went and collected some more stuff to finish the greenhouse setup, and that is pretty much it. Day 71 was another simple, plain day of, well, the only really exciting thing was my sneeze at the start of it. <coughs> Did some more fishing, nothing new. Think about getting the lava katana and, uh, you know, embracing my inner avatar, but unfortunately, too broke for that. Went back home, gathered some wood, and called it there. Today is the Stardew Valley Fair, which also marks day 72. So, had to find some quality items and hopefully try to get a decent place. Went and did a few of the mini games, a little bit of fishing, a little bit of darts, and tried to do some slight gambling. Also, I had a second stroke here of the 100 day challenge. It's me stretching. <laughs> Left after doing the crystal ball, which is totally inaccurate, and did some stuff around the house and went to bed. Day 73 was pretty simple. Woke up, did some stuff, as per usual. Went to the mines to look for items to put towards the boat. And mainly for that, I needed iridium ore. Spent all day in the mines, otherwise not much else happened. So, day 74 rolled around. You know, I think someone should uh, play a game where they do something every single time I say the term rolled around. There should be like a little marker or someone should do for me. A little fun challenge if you guys ever decide to make a separate that about me. Anyway, got myself a ton of cranberries. Uh, had the third stroke of the challenge. Oh boy! And made about 50,000 of the 140,000 gold. Afterwards, I tried my luck in Skull Cavern, but made it to floor only 16. Which isn't bad, but I needed to get just a little bit further. Also got level 10 farming, which means I need to choose a perk. And, as per usual, I chose the artisan perk. Day 75, and I went and bought the last community project for about 15,000 gold, a little bit left over, and bought myself the final backpack upgrade. So, what's the plan moving forward? Well, I'm gonna buy a lot of beer. I'm gonna explain why. Pam really loves beer. That's her loved gift in the game. And Pam also will send you batteries in the mail if she has a high enough friendship with you. So I just need to give her a lot of loved gifts and the easiest one to get is beer from Gus from the Star Drop Salon and it opens at 12. So that was the plan. So the biggest things we need to fall back into place is two more artifacts or minerals, four more battery packs since the Pam beer dilemma, and six iridium ore. And the only other thing that really drops batteries is the iridium bats in the skull cavern. After all that, then we can get back to fishing. Anyway, thanks for listening to my TED talk and hear me stumble around my words. See you guys tomorrow for day 76. Day 76, I did a lot of 
in real life and in-game thinking about how I'm going to play on these next final days because it's incredibly crucial. Anyway, now at this point I need to search for two more artifacts or minerals and it's taking a little longer than I anticipated. But then I even got more lucky than I thought and I got them. Gunther. Oh, let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god. We got the key. Woo! <laughs> now I have to double check. Did I really have all the ones I needed? Because usually there's always a new reward that pops up, but nothing happened. After that, I decided to go to Skull Caverns and try to do a little more advancement. Maybe possibly also get some battery packs and get some more iridium ore. Got a little bit, and now we're back home. See you guys tomorrow. Day 77, as per usual, rolled around, and it turns out it did work. I woke up to found Gunther at my door. We finally got the sewer key. Went down to the sewer, right after that, of course. However, I didn't bring my fishing stuff, so I had to go back for it. But I also got sidetracked, and there's an important reason why I got sidetracked. So, I went into the secret area with the henchmen, and it's just as important because it's another important fishing area. Also, I give a deep explanation in game here. So just take a listen. So, the witch's swamp is the void of salmon. Boom. Then we've got the mutant bug lair. Boom. And then we've got, over here on the other side, we've got the mutant carp. Boom. All I have to do is get those battery packs and we will be good. <laughs> After that, I went over to Willie's and checked out the beauty of the boat he has. So things we need to fix the boat are the five battery packs, spiel earlier with Pam and beer, 200 pieces of hardwood, which is why I've been doing all the tree chopping, and five iridium ores. So we need to go back to Skull Cavern Mines, and that's where I'd find most of the stuff we need. Did a little bit of mining before I called it a day and headed home. Day 78. I woke up and figured out luck was not on my side. About time, right? Hasn't happened in a while. But we'll push past it and we'll head back to the sewers. We get the mutant carp. Uh, it's a little bit of a back and forth, but I finally get it. It's the 43rd catch. Please, please. Yeah! Went back to the other areas, which is the mutant bug lair, and I catch the slime jack. Now all we need is the glacier fish. Also, I'm back to go to find Pam, driver with some beers, to get those battery packs. Lastly, I went to the voided area with the henchmen, where the witch's cave is at, and I got some void mayonnaise, which isn't a fish, but we'll give it a try. Give it to the guy, and well, the henchman loves void mayonnaise. 45th catch, finally, is the void salmon. We are well on our way, but also fall is coming to an end. Day 79, another day, another dollar? Well, kind of. Cranberries are done, so we'll see what we can do. After comp 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 contemplating my life and game, I went back to the mines. Got as much quartz and iron as I could, and I used all my iron to make a lot of bombs. And you'll see why soon enough. So I need the bombs essentially to break through the rocks in the Skull Cavern as quickly as I can, so I can get the ladder, so I can go further down, so I can get the Iridium Bat, or the prehistoric floors, so I can find batteries. Day 80. Fall's coming to an end, but I need to finish Skull Cavern as soon as possible. And that's what the bombs were for. So, made my way, started rolling to the floors, breezed through all the way to 58. It was on 15 at the start of the day. And we decided to leave a floor, floor 60, because I ran out of bombs, didn't want to risk it. Got 32 iridium ore though, which is also I needed to collect, which helped with the boat. Went home, started smelting it, and went to bed. Day 81. Woke up, went and opened some geodes. Hope to get a few artifacts, but that was pretty much it, and I did get a few. Went back to the mines, farmed our day, got some more resources, started to get late, so I went home. We're so close to this boat fix problem, but we just need battery packs. Day 82, well, you guessed it. So I went back to the mines at 9.50, left at around 11.30, went home, slept. Day 83, you guessed it, same exact thing. Went back to the mines. So. I started talking about iridium bats and all this and everything, and why am I doing all this? Well, batteries. Iridium bats, they're after level 55, I believe, in the mines, 50 or 55, and they have a 5% chance of dropping batteries. That's why I'm so adamant about getting it so far. Well, uh, see you tomorrow. Day 84, woke up, collected some more crops, and realized I should check the traveling cart, because it's been a while, and all of the gods and deities Bless me, because it was selling battery packs. No more Pam, no more beer. We're buying our way out of here. Oh my god, we did it. We fucking did it. Let's go! 
Mmm. Mmm. We're good. Life's good. Uh-huh. We both did it! Bought five because it's pretty much all I need. And we are set! Once the boat, it'll be fixed tomorrow. Sold all my crops, made 22,000 gold. And it was the best way to bring the best season to an end. I'll see you guys tomorrow in winter. Day 85, or winter day one. We have 15 days left, 10 fish to catch. Night market is gonna be the biggest thing that blocks us from completing this goal at this point. There's three fish uh, I have to catch. It's the midnight squid, it's the blob, and one other one. Uh, editors will throw them up, but I can't remember all their names at the moment, but they're there. So, first things first is I went to Willie's, I took the boat out for a spin, went to Ginger Island, of course, and started fishing. 46 catch was the lion fish. Then I have to go collect walnuts, and here is the reason why. You need golden walnuts in this game in order to get access to other parts of the island, and one of the parts of the island that you need is the Pirate's Cove, and there's a very specific fish in Pirate's Cove known as the Stingray that you can only catch there. But the problem is you need a certain amount of level of gold monads to upgrade one level of the map to get to the Pirate's Cove. So the goal was to try to get five a day until day 13 in game. At least that's the plan. So we'll see what happens. See you tomorrow. So, day 86, did some regular winter fishing in the main area. 47th catch was the Lin Cod. Didn't take very long for me to do, and I went to go to Ginger Island. Spent most of the day gathering walnuts, which turned out fairly decent. Still need a lot more in the grand scheme of things, but we're gonna go back home and call it there. See you guys on day 87. Day 87, woke up and went straight to Ginger Island. Looked around for some golden walnuts, but decided to fish instead. The 48th catch was the blue discus, meaning the only one we had left of the Ginger Island fish was the stingray. Didn't do much after that and ended up going home. So, day 88, as the challenge gets closer and closer to an end as we hit winter day four. So we need about 31 more walnuts. So, went to Ginger Island and did a little bit of area there where I can keep growing crops. Also growing crops and harvesting them is one way you can get walnuts as well. Made a couple bombs to collect stuff quicker and went into the volcano to try to get some more. Collected quite a few until the end of the day, only had left 10, 19 left to find, and decided once I upgraded the Ginger Island to the normal farmhouse, sleep there. Day 89, woke up per usual and blew some more stuff up in hopes to find more walnuts. That's basically what the whole day was. Towards the end of the day though, I made the farm a little bit bigger and essentially in hopes to find some walnuts by harvesting. But before ending the day, I went back over to the docks and fished some more. 49th catch was the squid. Hell yeah, caught the squid, baby. We caught the squid, let's go! And this time, I went to sleep at home. Day 90, I didn't head to Ginger Island straight away as I decided to do some more fishing. I still need the glacier fish, and after a whole lot of fighting back and forth, it finally happened. But I'll let the in-game footage show it. <sighs> Cut them all, baby. We've cut all the legends. We are moving on. <laughs> 50th catch was the glacier fish, meaning we have caught all of the legendary fish at this moment. So all I have to do now at this point is getting more walnuts. But of course, let's go spend all my money on salads first. Realized this wasn't the smartest idea ever, so I sold some back to peers. Went back to Ginger Island and fished, setting up the farm of sprinklers. Went back to the volcano, got two walnuts pretty quickly. Just went back to Ginger Island farm to sleep instead of going back to the mainland. And at this point, we only have 10 days left. Day 91, flopped around like a fish and woke up in a glorious singing mood according to the in-game footage. They're like, oh, mommy, what go? Oh, 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 oh. We are on day 91. Went around looking for some more walnuts, but instead found a golden coconut. Went to the secret area with glowing crystals, and it took the entire day, because essentially it's a Simon Says, but with music. And finally got some more walnuts from that, but we still need eight more. 
back to bed for now. Day 92, started my day by going straight searching for walnuts, couldn't waste any time. Basically did that for the entire day and found a few, which was good. Started to get late, I pushed forward a bit too much and passed out. Not really what we needed at all. Day 93, however at this point I still had all the gems I needed to get the last walnuts. So I went straight to the bird artifact store as I call it, placed them, did a little bit of RNG to figure out what needed to go where, and just like that, I had gotten all the remaining walnuts I needed. Woo! We did it, let's go! Hell yeah, dude. That's all I wanted right there. So then I went and, uh, well, built the beach resort and went to the Pirate Cove, which by the way, is a fantastic little mini game that they have a lot of available when the pirates are actually here, including darts. 51st catch was the stingray. And at this point we have caught all of the ginger island fish. Now we're just missing the night market fish. And those fish are the blobfish, the spookfish, and the manite squid, which also blobfish has a 10% chance, the spookfish has a 16% chance, and the manite squid has a 21% chance. So I was gonna try to give myself literally a day and a half. Sorry, I was gonna give myself day and day and a half, day and a fish, fish and a half to catch each of them, but that's not physically possible. So I had to use something to give me a little more higher increased chance, so I used the curiosity lure, but you'll see that later on. Day 94, pretty boring day. Went to the mines to collect further resources for the next 100 day challenge. Keep a lookout for that. Make sure to like and subscribe. Actually don't, don't like, don't subscribe, report everything, turn off your computer, throw it out the window. Sonic boom! Afterwards, I spent most of the day on Ginger Island just getting more materials. Went to bed. Day 95, chaps. Another day of waiting for the boring night market. Actually, that's a lie. It's a boring day of waiting for the night market. Please excuse this accent of mine. It's the editors. Went to the mines, then did a little bit of fishing, and that's it. At this point, it's just waiting for the night market so we can get the final three fish. Day 96, I woke up and as always went to the mines. Now, at this point, you guys are probably wondering why I keep going back to the mines as well. Well, there's a couple of things I really want. Actually, there's just one thing I need from the mines and uh, that is squid ink. And squid ink is, well, obtained from squid kids. And I need squid ink, flounders, and midnight carp, which help create seafoam pudding, which gives you a plus four fishing. So essentially at this point, I am trying to do everything I can to get the highest percentage to get these fish. So I did end up getting finally some squid ink after hours and hours and hours of attempting. Yes, we got the squid ink, let's go! <laughs> and the day was the same as the rest. Did some last minute fishing and I went home. Day 97. Well, I think today we're gonna take a moment and see how far we've come. Look at all these fish we've caught. Some though are from the crab pot, but they still count. Started out as a humble fisherman and now I have almost all of them. I won't bore you though with the same day like always. Just know I didn't pass out and I made it home in time. Day 98. Two days left, we're cutting it close. Woke up and found Pierre at my door telling me that my year is almost over. But little does he know I won't be coming back unless you want to see me do another 100 day challenge. Anyways, saw so Owen aside. I want my name for us today. Then I went over to Ginger Island one last time. Look at the farm I built in so little time and slept on Ginger Island one last time. Day 99. I got 99 problems, but my editors aren't one of them. The night market is here. It's finally done. I head to the boat. I head straight to it. However, where I need to be is locked until 5 p.m. So I waited and waited and waited a little bit longer until exactly 5 p.m. I go into the submarine, go down, and I start fishing and pretty much instantly I catch something. So, the 50 second catch is the blob fish. Yes. And I cast it once again, my rod and almost straight away, the 53rd catch is the spook fish. Caught the spook fish. Oh my God. We are one fish away from doing this. Oh my God. <laughs>
Now is the final push of the final fish of the Stardew Collection. Countless hours of grinding and stressing, dealing at my editors, telling my people I can't come over because I'm too busy fishing, but it was worth it. The 54th and final catch was the Midnight Squid! Oh, <laughs> oh my god, we did it! <laughs> and just like that, I had completed my goal of catching every single fish before the 100th day. Afterwards, I did what any young single fisherman bachelor like myself would do. I went home and slept myself into the final day. Day 100, also known as Winter Day 16, for anyone else wanting to start their own 100 day challenge. The day that seems so far away is now here. I placed all the rarest fish in fish tanks so I could get a good look at all of my hard work and progress. And while you watch me do so, I want to thank you for coming on this adventure with me. It's been a swimming time. This was one of the most ambitious projects I've ever done on this channel and something I've always wanted to do for a while now. Now I've made the fish tanks, placed the fish in their proper spaces, and it's trying to get late. So I lay down and enjoyed the last few moments I had left. I guess the only thing left to do now is be like where the fish call home the ocean and wave goodbye. I'll see you in the next challenge. Welcome back everyone. It's time for a new Stardew Valley challenge. Problem is, is I don't really have any major ideas for this one. But hey, you know what makes things always more fun? The Wheel of Fortune. Actually, wait, wrong wheel. The Wheel of uh, these items. What do all these items have in common? Well, let me tell you, they are random. Anyway, enough of that. Let me tell you what the real purpose of this challenge is. This challenge is I took a mod from the Nexus Mod Managers and took all the items in the game to be completely randomized. So my goal, complete the community center within 100 days to a year and see just how far I could get in the craziness of the void. I'll see you guys there. Day one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Stardew Valley challenge. Probably wondering how this one will end. Anyway, I did the basics like I usually did. And let's just say though, this one was a little more random, so it'll make things interesting. Anyway, after getting used to some of the new items, I did what I could and called it there. Day two. It's time to get back into my natural form. Hadouken! <laughs> Just kidding, the fishing form. Anyway, went ahead and got myself the basic fishing rod and fished for a while. And that all paid off because I got myself, well, that thing. Anyway, worth it. See you tomorrow. Welcome to day three. It's raining, meaning I'll get some fishing done. But firstly, I made sure to clean the farm and make some more space. After that, I did what I could. End up getting level one foraging. The next day, did the usual boring tasks. I decided to look for gifts that I would need to give to people when it came to giving the items that they thought they would need the most and so on and so forth. Anyway, surprisingly, the first love gift is by Shane and he loves stone. This is an interesting challenge. Even the love gifts are randomized. Anyway, afterwards, I took a look around at some of the farm items had... <laughs> okay. Anyway, afterwards, I took a look around at some of the farm buildings from Robin and realized that it might not be as easy as I thought. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Anyway, after that giant tongue twister, day five. And this day, I actually went ahead and finally unlocked the community center. Day six, well, it was a pretty interesting day because what I looked into is everyone well, almost everyone seems to either like or love fiber. So I guess that's the best thing to invest in. So I guess I'll have to reach out to Robin Hood. That's a little investment joke. Anyway, I did the usual stuff around the farm and took a look at what I would need to beat this challenge and complete the bundles that I had opened so far. Day seven, chop, chop, chop. That's it. I literally just chopped trees, decided to go to the mines, tried to get to floor five. Nope. Day eight. I spent most of the day on the farm that I wanted to clear, and I went ahead and I got level two farming, only to learn later on that it was very hard to make a scarecrow. So we'll see how that goes. As far as the randomness, apart from the whole scarecrow issue, hasn't been too much of an issue. I just said issue twice. 
I don't want to jinx it, but let's move on to the end of the day. Anyway, I also got level one fishing. Bye, have a great time. The next two days, I, uh, I, I just, I just forged. Editor, add some epic music and throw in some sick beats. Thank you. Day 13, it's festival of the eggs day. After all, at this point, I've become a professional, so you know what this means. Straw hat, achievement complete. Call me Luffy, because I'm gonna become a pirate. Bye-bye. Day 14, halfway through spring. Nothing, literally nothing. Unless you want to see me clear some weeds, then there's something. But we have a separate channel just for that. So go check it out. Day 15, after doing the usual stuff around the farm, I went back to try my luck in the mines. Actually did pretty well. Made it to floor 20, sort of, kind of left the mines alive. Day 16 through 19. These days were pretty much the same, so I'm gonna give you the best parts. I built a bee house. Well, why did I build a bee house? So I can get honey, so I can donate it to the community center, and I can sell honey as an artisan good later on, so I can make gold. Day 20. Diggy diggy hole, diggy diggy hole. <laughs> I made it to floor 40 in the mine. That's it, see you tomorrow. Day 21. I spent the day making myself an empire, like the Romans of furnaces. Ironically that I needed iron ore to make a furnace, even though that's what I needed to put in the furnace. And that's pretty much it. That's that's all I got. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Day 22 to 23. I spent these days harvesting and foraging. Got myself level six farming. Guys, it's day 24. It's the flower dance. I'm not going. I went to the last challenge flower dance and we all know how that went. Woo! You want to be my partner for the flower dance? Oh, let's do it! Boom! Holy shit, let's go! Cut the cameras! <laughs> yeah, it was something. Anyway, I didn't have anyone to go with this time because my editors are like on vacation or they're in the, you know, Roman Empire. So, yep, see you tomorrow. Day 25, spring is almost ending. Did the usual morning routine, went to the mines. Made it all the way to floor 50. Did some gathering the useful materials here I decided would be best put towards upgrading some of my tools or else this challenge is going to take forever. Day 26, same literally as the day before. Just made it to floor 55. Yep, editors, cut to the next one before they leave. Finally followed through what I said I was going to do and I upgraded my ax. Went back, did some fishing and some other things. Definitely did not almost die in the mines when trying to get to floor 60. So let's move on to the last day of spring. Spring is already over. So far, I've been working on leveling up as much as possible in order to increase my chances of completing all the bundles. And that's that. I'll see you guys in summer. Bye bye. Welcome back, folks. We're in summer. I spent the first day of summer doing the usual new stuff of a season. I went to Target, I picked up the farm, I planted some new seeds, I watered them, you know, the usual stuff. But you know what's not boring is I got level four foraging and a steel axe. That's pretty cool. Summer two through three, there was a bit more boring stuff. Actually, that was a bit aggressive, but it's true. I didn't really do anything interesting, so here's a picture of your favorite animal. It's an elephant. Anyway, next day. Next day was very important because I actually completed the very first bundle, which was the resource bundle. Also, I made some progress on the other bundles and I unlocked the pantry and the fish tank. And I ended the day by doing some of the mines and even some of the fishing. Some mining and fishing, every bachelor's dream. Welcome to summer day five. What do we do today? Another heavily focused day on what? The community center. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? Who would have th think? Not like it's the whole challenge. Anyway, moving on, I unlocked a few more rooms, like the bulletin board, the boiler room, went ahead and completed the random bundle, and the sprish, the sprish? The spring of fish bundle. So to celebrate, I went around and gave everyone some fiber. The best gift of all. Next day was a speed round day. Here's all the bundles I completed. Boom, kapow, kapow. <laughs> and I got level four fishing. Summers, days seven through 10. Summers? Summer, day seven through 10, or 35 through 38. I'd like to mention at this point that basically all of summer was live streamed right here on YouTube actually. So you're actually watching a past live version of this, which is cool. Did some fun things that happened with chat and it involved Mark. Hey, Riverland farm, nice, best farm. Yeah, I did a randomizer for the farm and it was the one I selected. Wait, you think the Riverland farm is the best farm?
Look at all this fun stuff you missed out because you didn't you didn't come and watch the show. But maybe next time. Even though with all the shenanigans, I still managed to get level five mining and make it to floor 60, which was nice. The next day was summer 11, day 39. It's the Luau day. The Luau day, essentially, for those of you who are new to the game or new to the channel or have been living under a rock that's not the moon your entire life, no offense. It's essentially a day, it's the festival or event that occurs in the summer that the mayor comes and well, not really the mayor, the governor comes and visits you guys. And there's a giant soup, and depending on the item that you put into the soup, participants either love the soup, like the soup, dislike the soup, or hate the soup. And depending on what you get, depends on how many friendship points you get. So the more they like it, the more friendship points for everyone. So it's a really good way to boost your friendship points with everyone, or to really make sure that everyone is aware that you just don't like them. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. The next two days were some pretty big progress. Everything started out pretty normal. Did the usual routine around the farm, headed off to the mines, made it all the way to floor 75. That's not even the best part. I ended on the summer day of 13, or 41 overall, with being level seven farming. And I butchered that sentence so hard, but I'm not gonna fix it and post edit. Anyway, as you remember, the awards you get when you unlock a new level in something are also random. So this time, I also get it preserve jars. You know, preserve jars are really good for making money. Except I feel like the ingredients this time are really hard to make, so so I did not make much preserve jars. So much preservation did not occur. Anyway, yep, that that's it. Alright, welcome to summer day 14. We're officially halfway through summer. Big news, because this is the day I got the chicken co-op. Sorry, the chicken coop. No, it's not because I love chicken. Well, actually I do love chicken. Flashback to the I'm cooking chicken thing. I'm cooking editors, I'm cooking some chicken. But uh, it's big because it'll get me one step closer to being the challenge, and I need some eggs, and chickens are the way you can get eggs, unless you get them from the traveling cart. Anyway, I got two chickens in the coop, which is a good start, and I went ahead and completed another bundle. And the other bundle I got was the V bundle. Anyway, fun fact, the recipe to craft grass in this randomizer challenge is it actually takes rocks, which is interesting. So I made a bunch of grass for my chickens and stuff, but 15 through 17 of summer, crab pots. That's pretty much what the focus was. Spent some time setting them up, getting them in different areas, adding bait. Hopefully it'd be worth the end though. Other than that, I lived a good life. I did my farm stuff. See y'all tomorrow. Good news. Crab pots are paying off. Did my usual stuff, went ahead, checked the crab pots, and ended up getting a lobster already. Uh, to make things even better, got my first quality sprinkler. A little bit too late into summer, but better late than never. So we'll take it. No, it's fine. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember, pay your taxes and check your crab pots on a daily basis. And don't forget to check your refrigerator for any bear attacks. Summer day 1947. The mines are calling. They call it a mine. A mine. Name that movie. Okay, well, I had to go to the mines because I'm trying to find earth crystals so I can make more quality sprinklers because that's what's required in this recipe. But we'll keep it short because you already know I fainted a few times and then I died and I almost died and you know, then I found some earth crystals and... Hey there, welcome to day 20. Day started out pretty normal, but after that I went out and bought myself a silo because all that extra grass on the farm can be turned into hay once I have the silo built. Summer, day 21. I spent most of this day fishing and messing around with crab pots because it was raining. Then I spent most of the day hiding away from the rain in the mines. I made to level 90 and called it there. Oh, also I had the silo built, which was pretty neat because it helps collect hay. Okay, so on the 22nd of summer, I realized my notes were kind of a, 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 a my notes were kind of like a day off. So here's the main things that you just need to know happened in the past couple days. I had a four heart event with Penny. I did some mining. I got some combat levels. Also know I completed some bundles. Never back down, never what? Never give up. <laughs> never back down, never what? Welcome back to the video. If you're here instead of at the beginning, I don't know why you started at a halfway point. The last couple days were confusing, but hopefully it's all cleared up now. Anyway, I didn't give up because I'm back to the mines. Actually, things went my way. I made it to floor 95 and I got level A farming. I'll see you guys on a hopefully more straightforward day once day 52 rolls around. Next day, everyone's really asking the question, what's Pam's favorite gift? Actually, I'm really the only one asking because you know, I thought maybe friendship would be cool this time around. Long story short, Pam still loves beer, okay? I also uh, uh, ended up 
finding a tiger's eye. Anyway, it's for the community center. Um, that's it. Up. Oh, I'll see you guys on summer 25. Summer's almost over. Okay, bye bye. Welcome to the next day of summer, day 53, or summer day 25. We're on floor 100 of the mines. Explosions play. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. That's pretty much all I did was to almost die on the mines, and you know, that's it. Next couple days, more rain, but I didn't spend too much time fishing because I was looking for more geode items in the community center. So at this point, my search paid off because I did end up finding, which was the thunder egg. I did such a hard sentence for me to say. Anyway, I also made it to floor 115 of the mines, and I went ahead and bought myself a house upgrade. You're probably wondering why? Because I need to be able to cook things, and that's the only way you can do it is if you have a house upgrade. And that's it. Welcome to the last day of summer. I was checking on my arch nemesis, the traveling cart. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just click on the video appearing on the top right, right now. Anyway, moving past the shameless plug, I got myself two more earth crystals, and that's actually it for the summer. I'll see y'all next fall. Have a great trip. Welcome to fall. Did you guys know fall is my favorite season? I could like have a loop of me saying that now. Fall one and two, I just spent the days doing the usual preparations and I actually found an ancient seed as well, which was pretty impressive. All right, so day three of fall, lots of fishing, lots of newspapers. I also got level five fishing, finally, but you know, we'll get there. All right, fall four through six. We're gonna speed run these days because literally it was the same routine. I sold some fish, I did some crop work, I got myself a backpack upgrade, and I made it to floor 120 of the mines. Got myself the skull key on level five combat. All right, welcome to day seven of fall. Even though I beat the mines previously, I had to go back. I'm not addicted, but I needed more earth crystals so I can get more quality sprinklers. So I actually went back and got three, and I pushed my luck, and um, you know, things didn't go too well. So I'll see you tomorrow. Fall day eight, new day, same goals. Yep, I just needed that one earth crystal. I got it, no problems, didn't even die. Not even the best part though is because I also got myself two quality sprinklers, which probably would have been more handy in summer because, you know, I could have been more efficient. But, you know, it's all right. All right, fall days nine through 11, or 65 through 67. What did I do in this chunk? I actually completed two bundles, the Mexican food bundle and the egg bundle, which was very expensive. And things were looking up when Finally, out of nowhere, look who shows up. God damn it! I'm not a huge fan of the fairy, and that's okay. As we round the corner and enter days 13 and 12 of fall, that's right, I said that backwards on purpose, we go to the mines because we need more geodes, which I did not faint. But I got close, but I didn't, so a booyah. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow as we reach halfway through fall. Bye bye Welcome to day 14 of fall. Pretty big day here. I actually completed a quest. Specifically, it was Gus's quest. I needed to get some eggs to turn into Gus so I could get some more friendship points and complete this as part of the bulletin board. Anyway, focusing on more important things, I completed the winter foraging bundle. I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to day 15 of fall. Super <laughs> mega important oh day to sound the alarm. Okay, okay, enough of that. Turns out all the farming I was doing was just about to pay off as I actually ended up getting level nine farming. And oh boy, was the reward big. Welcome to fall day 16, the Stardew Valley Fair. Gambled a bit, only a little bit. Ended up winning the star drop, and overall, it was a pretty good day. See you tomorrow. Next day would have been a pretty meh kind of day, but it was raining. So I went fishing, made things a little bit better, checked on the crab pots, and pretty much called it there. Oh, and I got level six fishing, which was helpful. The next day was fall 18. I felt the chill of my knee hitting the desk. It was a pretty normal day. Did the usual stuff, did some fishing, and then everything took a turn. I unlocked the bus. Here's my in-game reaction. Unlock the mother freaking bus stop, baby. Next day. Remember how I told you guys I was really good at the mines, never came close to dying? Skull Cavern kind of changed all of that. No! Are you, are you serious? serious right now, bro? Yeah, that happened quite a bit. But on the bright side, I still completed the desert, not dessert, fish bundle. Probably wondering how? I just fished in the desert. That's it.
Next day was the day that everything changed. Well, just about everything. I got the Crystallitarium, and here's why it's important. Crystallitarium allowed me to deplicate almost just about any mineral in the game. It was very useful. It was nice, it was nice. Also, I lost a sword, which was really unfortunate, but then I bought another one, so it kind of worked out, sort of, kind of, I don't know, it's complicated. The 21st to the 22nd of fall. Throughout these two days, I pretty much spent the time in the mines looking for earth crystals because I had the crystallarium and I wanted to kind of export that process. Thankfully, didn't die, which was a first, and I actually made it home safe. Fall 23, day 79 overall the challenge. It's time to face the Skull Caverns, the ultimate nemesis to any Stardew Valley player. I went over there, kept searching for the few things I needed, and what I really needed was to complete the orange bundle. And I think there was an item, like a tiger stripe thing or something else, I can't remember. But I did find it. I didn't die, and I completed it. Got an Redeem Splinkler. It's pretty solid. Day 80 was literally just a repeat, so yep, that's it. Day 25 of fall. We're getting pretty close to the end of fall. Things are actually going pretty well, but I don't want to jinx it. I'm gonna just get a few more chickens, name them awkward names, and completed the blue bundle. I'll see you guys for the end of fall. Fall 26, 27, and 28. We're kind of a blur. Nothing too critical happens until the last day. Most of what I did throughout these days was the usual stuff, trying to figure out the last items I needed to beat this challenge. My brain was like, we need a greenhouse. And boom, we got a greenhouse. Incredible. Also fall's done. I'll see you guys in winter. Have a great freeze. That doesn't really work here. Forget I said anything. Welcome to my second favorite season in the world, winter, also known as hell for some people. Winter day one, did the usual season routine and prepared to farm winter crops. The thing is, I'm gonna realize that's gonna bite me in the butt later on, because I thought there was winter crops I could buy from Sandy, but we'll leave that for a later time. I also realized I had all the items I needed for the Demetrius bundle. Other than that, it was a pretty normal, boring start, but I have a feeling things are going to get very interesting and I just bumped the mic, I'm super sorry. Please forgive me, editors, okay, bye. Winter day two. I want fishing because I need just one more fish to complete the last fish bundle. If you love fishing, you should go check out another video. It's not actually by me. That's a lie it is. That's, that's a complete lie. Also, I messed setting up the farm, so cut. Next day. So remember that plant I was talking to you about that I thought I bought from Sandy, didn't actually grow, and then I learned it didn't grow and it was kind of confusing and I'm probably doing it wrong. It didn't actually grow for me in the winter. So my plans kind of crashed and burned of how I was gonna make further income apart from the greenhouse because I play a lot of this game, but I am no means good at it, just to clarify. Winter day four through five. I could say it was more nothing, but then I'd be lying. So I actually made level six combat and because lying is bad, and make sure to pay your taxes. Other than that, that's about it. Welcome to winter day six. You thought I was done with the skull cavern? Well, you're wrong, because I have to go back. I was doing some kick button and gum chewing and made it all the way to level 40, floor 40, whatever. I have to keep going back to the mines because I really, really, really need the glow ring. And that glow ring is gonna be a pain in my God. <laughs> Anyway, uh... All right, winter day seven, because I was able to trade gems, I believe at some point, to get totems and totem recipes from the desert trader, which I was able to do and therefore complete the totem bundle. I also put my money to use and had the quarry bridge repair started and I'll see you guys on day 92, goodbye. Day eight of winter, a whoop whoop. Anyway, we're very close. Today was a very important day as I actually went ahead and completed the entire bulletin board, a goal that was so far away when we first started. How do we celebrate? To the mines of Moria. All right, this next chunk of days is kind of large. There's not a lot of really interesting things here. It's just because I went to the mines, the Skull Cavern, and for the farm. Mainly for the ring, and that's it. All right, welcome to day 100. It's crazy. Whenever I hit 100 days in a challenge, it's kind of a weird, surreal feeling. And this is usually the time where I call it, except this time I'm taking it to a year. That's why I told myself, you know, complete the community center that's been randomized in one year or less. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I wasn't able to find the glow ring, but Hopefully I'll be able to pull it off the next couple days. And if you're still at this point, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking around. I won't bore you in a Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Winter 17 through 19, still no luck. I'm still trying to find the ring and that's that. But a new strategy is emerging. 
winter day 20. Here is the new strategy. We are going to invest in spicy tershark and the crystallarium is going to help with that because we are going to increase our luck even by a little. So we'll see how that goes. Winter's day 21 through 26 or day 105 through 110. Things were not looking great. Even the assistance of the spicy turf shark, I couldn't find the glow ring. I was panicking. I even hoped to maybe find it. Just maybe find it even during the, the Christmas Eve thing, celebration, gift giving thing. I don't even remember what I got, but yeah, it, I was panicking at this point. Finally, on day 111, before the season of winter ended and year one came to a close, I found the glow ring. And I'm gonna let the in-game reaction speak for itself. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Please be it. Please. Holy sh**! Holy sh**! Oh my God, no way! <laughs> so, winter day 28. I woke up, I embraced the community center completion cutscene. I got the reward for being the Stardew Valley hero, and it was done. I completed the goal I set out to, well, achieve, which was complete the community center in one year with the randomized item challenge. So what are my thoughts on the overall challenge, the randomizer? It was some of the most nail-biting, frustrating, blood pressure raising, intense Stardew Valley I've ever had. And I loved every second of it. I loved the little randomized bits here and there. I loved how the recipes were just all over the place and havoc. And I loved the simplicity of some of it. It was great. Do I see myself trying to do it again? A hundred percent, yes. Anyway, thank you for joining me on my ranting. I hope you enjoyed this challenge and thanks for coming on this journey with me. And if you'd like to see another one, please don't hesitate to let me know below. Hey boss, what's that film with Ryan Gosling? The Notebook. What, what do you want? want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? No. Crazy stupid love? Be better than the gap. Be, Be better than the gap. the gap. Nope. Drive. The big short? I mean, seriously, I feel like I'm financially inside, inside of you or something. Or something. Okay. Uh, next. Barbie. Hi, Hi Barbie. Barbie. That's the one. Spring one, day one. We're back at it again. Finally, another Stardew challenge. And like always, it starts with clearing the front of the farm and of course, planting the first starter seeds. Bought some potatoes from Pierre. And after that, well, talked to some NPCs to level up my friendship with them and went on home. Day two, big highlight of day two. I made a chest. Anyways, nothing much happened as you can tell probably by the highlight other than I went around, talked to Haley, did some fishing on my beautiful beachfront farm, which was actually a requirement for this challenge, so we can check that one off. Day three, spend all day fishing, which because it was raining and I wanted to use my time wisely to beat this challenge. Thanks, past me, that was great. Now moving on to future me doing the voiceover for day four. Day four, thank you past Yulon. And as you can tell, not a lot happened on day four. Anyway, jokes aside, I did do some things like fishing and planning the best way to level up my friendship with Sam and Harvey. See you tomorrow. The next day, I worked on leveling up my friendship with Haley, as well as trying to give her the best gift anyone can, a salad. And then this day also marked the start of the mines, just barely though, because I did about five floors. Afterwards, I went back home and watered my crops and well, called it there. Day six rolled around. I sold a few things just to get enough money to buy another salad to gift away to Haley. And then I went fishing, started thinking about what I could get for Sam as a gift. And the only reasonable thing that came to mind was pizza. Day seven, it's Mayor Lewis's birthday, everyone. So at this point, I wanted to give him either a liked or a loved gift. And the importance of doing it on a birthday is because it gives you more friendship points. And well, part of the challenge was having friendship points with everyone at some point. So I went ahead and did that and I got more potatoes because well, I'm gonna need more money to afford all that salad and other gifts. Afterwards, I went about my day and 
fished a while. Actually, I fished for a long time. And before I knew it, I lost track of time, still to give Haley a gift for the day. And I went over to her house, and it was too late. No! Come back! Come back! <laughs> <sighs> Better luck next time. Day eight. To fill the void left in my heart by my mistake yesterday. I decided to fish all day until I got distracted. Oh! And that's that. So, day nine, I just spent this day being as good of a friend and getting as many gifts as I could to people as possible, especially though to Sam and Harvey, because part of the rules is to have max friendship with Sam and Harvey. So that's why they are getting specialized gifts and more attention. Day 10, the most important day of the entire challenge. Any challenge, actually, in any Stardew Valley universe. The day you get the dog or the cat. And as per usual, I always forget the name. Tell you what, first one to message all three names of the previous challenges into the Discord under the Stardew Valley general conversation will get something. Anyway, I got something also from the bulletin board. Outside appears, it was a quest, and I need the gold. And then I went about my day normally and gifted my usual salad, but then I just did some more fishing. Day 11 through 12, I literally just watered my crops and fished. And here's a time lapse of a dog doing a backflip. Day 13, it's Egg Festival Day. I took course and part of it. Wow, that's words are hard. It's the Egg Festival. I took part in it, of course, and actually ended up winning. Well, too bad because the Star Hat won't do for this time. What I really need. <laughs> That's right, the cowboy hat. Day 14 through 17. We're halfway through spring at this point. So I forgot to mention that I had expanded my farm quite a bit at this point, which will be very helpful when it comes to saving up enough money to get a horse. Speaking of getting a horse, by the way, let's see how much a stable is. 10,000 gold, a hundred hardwood. Oh my God, a hundred hardwood. As you can tell from that reaction, it's gonna take a while to acquire that. Not a lot happened after that apart from the usual fishing, salad gifting, crop watering. That's kind of got a rhyme to it. I could throw that on the back of a shirt. Uh, contact me if you're interested. I'm making that for me. Bring 18 through 23. These days didn't consist much more than, well, me just causing casual deforestation every day on the farm and improving my friendship and trying to make some gold. Also, key thing is as Ken in this challenge, I'm not going to try to touch any trees that are not on the beach, unless there's like extraneous circumstances, which I'm sure I'll explain later. So that's why the ones that are on the grass area, I kept there. So after all that, I made it all the way to four hearts with Haley, which is great seeing that spring isn't even complete, which means we are right on track. Like a train. Chugga 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 chugga. Day 24. Today marks the flower dance, everyone. I have actually, if I'm able to dance with someone out the dance, this is my first like dance I've ever been to. Not like in real life, chat. Don't, don't make it confusing. No, it's not the first dance I will have been at in real life, but will have been the first flower dance I will have been at in Stardew. So I'm sure all you Stardew Valley pros know what this means, but for those who don't, well, the flower dance is pretty much an opportunity to, if you have enough friendship hearts with someone, to dance with them and gain further friendship points with them. Anyway, the flower dance wasn't really all that exciting. Woo! You want to be my partner for the flower dance? Ah, oh, let's do it! Boom! Holy shit, let's go! Cut the cameras! <laughs> Welcome to day 25, where nothing actually happens, so, uh, cut. Spring 26, also known as day 26, also two days before spring ends. Now, this day was exciting because we had some big developments with Haley. We made it to the six hearts, and I got a bit too caught up in my character. Oh my god, just gonna kiss me! Ah! <laughs> Ignoring everything you just saw, everything seems to be going pretty smooth. Spring 27 through 28. Simple last two days of spring where I just leveled up all their friendship points and did not mess with my gifting and give the wrong gift to someone. <coughs> anyway, did some basic farming, and I will see you guys in summer.
Summer's here and we have a lot of work to do, like redoing the whole farm. So essentially what happens every start of a new season is that the farm resets. Trees regrow, weeds respread, rocks repopulate. So, have to clear it up. Other than that, I leveled up my friendship with a few more people, made a steel axe, and got level four foraging. Also, I decided to plant blueberries and sunflowers because sunflowers are Haley's favorite gift. Next day of summer, summer two. Very simple day of doing the usual work around the farm, mainly focused on fishing and finishing up by gifting folks. Remember all that deforestation I was doing? Well, it finally came in handy because I actually reached the amount of hardwood I needed for the stable. Now I know, I know, I'm not the best at really calculating how much gold I need here, but I figured we were pretty close, right? Oh my god! Actually, turns out we were not that close at all. Oh, I also got seven hearts with Haley, which is one step closer to the end goal. Aww. On today, summer 12 also known as day four. We're almost there. Well, at least with, you know, max friendship with Haley and all that. The rest of the challenge, we're not even close. But focus on the good, I got eight hearts with Haley and trying to make the necessary preparations to have her be my girlfriend, which consisted of a bouquet of flowers. Day 41. Things were off to a pretty awkward, odd start because there was a very awkward, odd, strange scene involving Sam. Oh, look. I went to the wrong fucking house. God damn it. <laughs> Well, hi, Ken. I was about to come have a snack. <laughs> Here, let me get something for you. Ah! Oh no, what a mess. What the hell was that sound? <gasps> Absolutely terrible. What happened? Tell her, Sam handed me the snack and I dropped it. Yeah, that's what happened. Thanks for telling me the truth, Ken. I'll just redo. Sorry about this, Mom. I'll clean it up. Thanks, honey. Sorry. Thanks, honey! Oh, that was really awkward. Um, But never minding that, let's get to the good part. I went over to Haley's place, and with my incredible in-game charisma, I got her to become my girlfriend. Then, seeing it was raining, I did some fishing, and I finished the day by gifting other people I could find in the area. Day 42. This was a big, big day, especially for terms of income. Blueberries were finally done, and I sold them, which was nice. I was given 18,000 gold. You know what that means? Anyway, enough foreshadowing. See you guys on day 43. As day 43 rolled around, we did the big thing we had planned out to do from the start. We bought the stable! That's, that's literally it. Next day, all I had to do was wait for the stable to be built. So in the meantime, I put myself to work and I started to make some preserves jars. The reason is, is because anything placed in the preserves jars can be a good source of income. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Day 45. The stable is complete. I mean, I finally got the horse. We both know what happens next. But wait, it gets better. I also got up to eight hearts with Sam, which meaning that part of the challenge was almost complete. And after all this winning, I felt pretty worn out. So I went to bed pretty early. Day 46 through 47. I did quite a few things in between those days, like getting all the way up to nine hearts with Haley and buying a house upgrade, which is part of what was needed in order to marry Haley. So all I have to do now is obviously get the last heart, get the mermaid pennants, repair the bridge. The next day was incredibly important because... I mean, come on, it's pretty great. You know you love it. Actually, that's literally it for the day. So yeah, I'll see you guys on day 49. Day 49. Now, if you've watched any of my previous starter videos, you know that my luck isn't always the best. Like that one time I had to wait two months to get the right thing for the traveling car. Well, it seems now like my bad luck is catching up to me because I actually failed to get the mermaid's pennant. The reason is because the bridge has to be repaired and the old mariner has to give you the option to buy the pennant and uh, it has to be raining and it has to be a certain time and you know, all that stuff. So there was a little bit of a hiccup, but not all as bad as I thought it was gonna be because as the house upgrade was finished, I reached best friend status or 10 hearts with Haley. Day 50. As the challenge closes halfway through, it's time for the second blueberry harvest, which actually ended up getting me just about 20,000 gold. 
afterwards, I just rode around my horse because, you know, I drive. Days 51 through 55 were summer through 23 through 27. Not a lot took place during these days except for watering, harvesting crops, fishing, gifting, and figuring out how in the world to beat this challenge. Day 56, summer 28. Summer's last day. What better way to end it than kissing my future wife? Offered help, Duggery. Okay. Decorate? Um, okay. Oh, no! <laughs> Interesting. Oh, no. No! <laughs> just my luck. Ahem. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, just just to make things uh, make me feel better, and it's just the same. But but you know, uh, uh, have a great trip, and we'll see you next fall. Welcome to my favorite season, ladies and gentlemen. Fall day fifty-seven consisted of clearing some basic debris and trees and everything else around the house and the farm, and I went ahead and planted some oak trees, which is important for oak resin, which is important for kegs, which is important for the challenge, so on and so forth. Also, I got some cranberries. Day 58 through 59, or fall 2 through 3, were pretty simple days. I got a boat painting, which also triggered my fishing instincts and had me fishing most of the rest of the day. I swear, guys, I'm not addicted to fishing. It's I can stop anytime I want. I really can, you know? I'm just stuck between a rod and a hard place. That sounds really wrong. Editor, cut that out. It was the fourth day of fall. Did the usual things. Around the farm, head off to go see Sam, and um, I also get a really awkward 10 heart event, which means then I have reached max friendship with Sam, which that part is then complete. It was still awkward, but it's, it's great progress. Anyway, see you guys on day 61. Day 61 through 64. These days were pretty much just spent fishing because I needed to reach level 10 fishing, which wasn't too difficult as I had level 9. And after that, I just helped with focusing my efforts around the town and leveling up a few friendship points here and there. And of course, making gold. Why do I need level 10 fishing? Because that's what Ken would do on the beach job. Let's get level 10 fishing. And that's that. Fall day nine. Today marks the end of a key part of a challenge. I finally maxed out my friendship with Harvey. To celebrate, I also went fishing, which I am not addicted to, okay? Fall day 10 through 14. Marking the halfway point through fall already. Big chunks of these days here were pretty similar because they consisted of me going around doing the same tedious grinding. But hey, it all came to a good end as on day 70 of the overall challenge, I finally reached level 10 fishing, getting one step closer to completing the Kenergy challenge. Day 15 of fall, also day 71 overall. It is time for the mines. That's right. So I made it all the way to floor 10. That's not the best part, because I also bought myself a JoJo Mart membership for the cheap, cheap price of 5,000 gold. The reason I'm going with JoJo is because, well, it probably seems like something Ken would do, especially through his drastic arc that occurs in the film. Anyway, enough of me explaining things, let's move on. The next day was the Sturdy Valley Fair. So you already know I was gonna beat all the games. Ended up getting myself a star drop and coming in first place. All of that didn't go too, too well. So I had to kind of reset some things, start things over and uh, ended up redoing it because I just could not afford to not sell the fish that I put onto the stand. Ball 17. So after the whole fish dilemma, I ended up doing a bit more, wait for it, fishing and selling other fish which I had left over, which got me a sum of around 20,000 gold. After that, went back to the mines, made it all the way to floor 20. Huh, 20,000 gold, 20th floor. Ironic, isn't it? Days 74 through 76. Throughout this chunk of days, I ended up buying the greenhouse, which puts me closer to my genius goal of how to make money, in winter especially. Now all I need was star fruit, which could be purchased in the desert from Sandy for about 400 gold each. But for that to be done, I had to get access to the bus from Jojo Mart. Anyway, did some more mining and made it to floor 30. Day 77. Now, for this day, we may have to ignore the notes I took because, um... Whoa, -ho -ho, buddy, don't look at that. No, no. <clears throat> anyway, main thing you should know is I still did not get the pennant. Days 77 through 79, I was a dwarf. Get it? Because I mined all day. Rock and stone! 
If you get that reference, make sure to like and subscribe. Day 80 through 81, the greenhouse was finally ready. So I went ahead, got some sprinklers set up in it where I would eventually start growing crops in there. But I stumbled around at this point because at some point it was raining and I completely forgot to get the pennant for Haley again. I don't know why I said it like that, but that's how it's gonna be. Today, 82 of fall 26. Thankfully, luck was on my side. What I meant by that, it was raining again and it gave me another chance to get the pennant. And I did just that. After that, I went mining, made it all the way to floor 60. But in the meantime, I found out how much sweet gem berries sell for. And let's just say, whew, it is a lot. Welcome to day 83. As fall comes to an end, I want to remind you of a dear question, my viewer who is watching you. I'm pointing at the screen, but you can't see it. Would this really be a Valon Fleet Stardew Valley challenge if things didn't go horribly wrong? Yep, you guessed it. It wouldn't. But don't worry, because that's exactly what happened on this day. I ended up dying. I lost a lot of gold and the sweet gem berry. The last day of fall is upon us. Day 28 of fall, also known as day 84 for a 100 day challenge. Fall is coming to an end. Luckily, my cranberries ended up growing just in time before winter would destroy them. But that's not all. I ended up collecting around 100 bok choy from the greenhouse, which I needed for a special quest I took up. Nothing else really happened other than that I just mentally prepared for winter. Welcome to winter day one. Winter's here, and I think it's about time we go through all the stuff I've left to do in the remaining days. I got the horse, I got level 10 fishing, I maxed my friendship with both Sam and Harvey. I mean, the only thing that's left for me to do is marry Haley. Oh, and get a black cowboy hat. Anyways, moving on to what I actually did on this first day was mainly consisting of me going to floor 80 of the mines in hopes of getting in hopes of getting closer to completing a goal done that I was originally saving for for the next 100 days of this challenge, but I thought maybe I could do it during the original first. Other than that, I watered some crops and I went to bed. Days 86 through 87. These two days were just spent on getting closer and closer to floor 100 without dying. But I never even came close to dying this time. <laughs> you can cut the camera at any, at any point now. Day four of winter. Believe it or not, I actually made it to floor 100. Got another star drop, celebrated, went home, slept. Only 20 more flows, flows. Only 20 more flows to go to get the Skull Cavern key. I'll see you guys tomorrow. As day five of winter rolled around, I started to remember I still needed to make a lot of money for what was coming next. So I started to make preparations just to do that. I made myself a seed maker, put some gem berry seeds in there, and got three rare seeds from it. Then I went back to face my old enemy, the infamous traveling cart. Thankfully, though, I actually got lucky and found some red cabbage in store. And if you've watched my previous Beating the Community Center, but with only my memory in the first year challenge, you know why I bought it so quickly. As day six and seven of winter arrive, the last 10 days of this challenge are upon us. I spent most of this chunk just pushing through the last bit of the mines, and it paid off because I made it to floor 120. Now with the skull key in hand, I could go looking for the black cowboy hat, but to do so I'd need around 40k gold to repair the bus, and there was no way I was gonna be fishing for that amount of money. I was gonna sleep for it, because I'm lazy, and so my crops can grow, of course. Day 92 through 95. I spent this time doing what I could while I waited for my crops to finish and tried to gather gold elsewhere as quickly as I could. The oak resin I planted also finished growing, meaning that I could look into making some kegs finally. Day 96. At this point, I had made just enough money and I was extremely excited based on my in-game reaction to purchase the bus pass. Oh my lord! Oh my god, dude! Oh, we're so close! <laughs> Which gave me maybe just enough time to maybe find the black cowboy hat. Day 97 was pretty straightforward. I just had to wait for the bus to be ready. So, you know, here's a picture of a goldfish. And here's a picture of a kangaroo. And here's a picture of the editor. And here's a picture of a cow. So, day 98. I sprinted as fast as I could to the bus, so I would have as much time to maybe, just maybe, 
get to the Skull Cavern Mines and maybe find the black cowboy hat in the treasure room. And to my surprise, I actually did not manage to pull it off. Contrary to belief, some of these challenges are a little, uh, a little difficult, you know, but, uh, you know, you know. Wouldn't that be boring if I succeeded in every single one the first time? Day 99. I had about just one day left after this and decided to forget about the black cowboy hat for now and prepare instead to use the last day to try to get it. So I harvested some fruit and pumpkins as well, and I placed them in a few kegs I was making in the shed to make even more money for the second part of the challenge. After that, I felt like I was pretty much good to go, nothing to do. But I do feel like I had forgotten a key part of the original challenge. I mean, the only thing that's left for me to do is marry you. It's probably nothing though, right? Day 100. Winter 16. The final day is here! How did I spend it as Ken from Barbie? The mines, of course with the goal of obtaining the black cowboy hat, which I believe this is the only way it can be obtained. So I tried my luck and let's just say it did not go too well. Anyway, that will bring these 100 days to a close. Now, here's a great explanation from past me of what has occurred, what did occur, and what will occur. Honestly, for the first 100 days, not too bad. Six, I'd say we got like 60% of the way there. 55, 60% of the way there. But anyway, that's going to bring this 100 day challenge to an end. If I were to complete another 200 days, I would friendship with all the gentlemen in town, except for Elliot. Marry Haley with the black cowboy hat. Have all the animals with one max worth of kicks. Anyway, that's about it for this challenge. I'm still not 100% Ken from Barbie, but with enough time, I will be. Do you want to see the next 100 days? Let me know. If you enjoyed this challenge, then I think I have just the video for you. And trust me, there's a lot of stuff that happens in this one. A lot of crazy stuff. Anyway, go watch it. What are you waiting for? I'll see you there. Captain O.